Oh, how about Gonzaga and St. Mary's? Have we seen this movie before in the West Coast Conference Final? Yes, we have. 11th time in 14 years. It's these two teams, Gonzaga and St. Mary's go again. St. Mary's was able to put uh, things away with Santa Clara. Gonzaga had some problems in the first half again with San Francisco, but uh, pulled away late night in the second half in Las Vegas. So again, it's the one and the two seed. Gonzaga is the three and a half point favorite, having just beaten St. Mary's in the regular season finale in Northern California. Now they're back playing again, as expected, in the championship game. Total 138 and a half. All right, gentlemen, let's handicap it. Uh, Matt Cox, begin the discussion here. West Coast Conference automatic bid. We believe both of these teams are safely in. Yeah. I think we nod and both say yes. yes. But somebody gets the conference tournament win on the neutral floor and ups their, their seating probably in the NCAA tournament. Matt, begin the discussion. Yeah, both teams very impressive last night, right? Like they've consistently taken care of their business against the Tier 2 in the WCC, right? San Francisco and Santa Clara. They did last night. Both look like they're in great form. I just think Gonzaga is the more dangerous team right now, and especially in this matchup. Um, without Josh Jefferson, St. Mary's has still kept the, you know, they've kept the ship afloat. They've looked really good. But I think when they step up in class here against Gonzaga, the loss of Jefferson, who is such a unique piece defensively and offensively, uh, as a guy they could put on Anton Watson, a guy they could put on Anton Watson, athletic wing dude they can play through. Now, Mason Forbes has stepped up admirably, um, in his spot, but man, he's got some major free throw issues. He was two of nine from the stripe last night. Well, it could be a really close game for a guy who is as high profile in the offense Forbes, I should say, I, I, I kind of worry about that kind of angle, especially against Anton Watson, who's an awesome defender. Um, not to get too nitty gritty in the X's and O's, but I do think that specific positional battle, the three, four will be really important here. Um, uh, both teams, great guards, both teams, great size up front, but kind of that tweener spot will be the separator. I lean the Zags. I think it's a bad number. I think the market's overreacted over the last couple of weeks, uh, given the Zags were catching points at uh, St. Mary's, and now they're laying three and a half. It's a pretty big you know, seven-point swing um, from away to neutral. I don't think that's justified. So I, I did stay away, but I do lean Gonzaga at three and a half. Jeff Nadeau, these two teams had not played on the neutral floor until last night. Um, and again, it took Gonzaga a little longer to get going probably in this. Again, they split in the regular season with St. Mary's winning early in Spokane. And then Gonzaga came back and won late uh, in the year as they have uh, they put together a great run at the end of the year. All right, any thoughts, including maybe something on the total? Rubber match tonight, winner gets the WCC title and the automatic bid. Yeah, nights like tonight I really like because I have both this game and another game where all I need the teams to do is win. I Every year I bet Gonzaga to win this tournament. This year we got a great number on it. Look, we knew this game was going to happen. It's, it's every year. These are always the two best teams, especially without Brigham Young in this conference anymore. Um, we had to figure this is how it was going to be. I looked over to the second game. I really like Gonzaga in that game for the one reason of what Matt talked about. Josh Jefferson was so important to what they did, particularly on the block. He's no longer there. But then I look at the box score and realize, well, St. Mary's did have 13 turnovers, which is very out of pocket for them. You'd have to figure that gets kind of figured out tonight. They only got to the free throw line nine times, which, you know, for them, they don't really get to the free throw line, but you have to figure you get more this time around. I thought this game was a little closer. I am a little worried about this. I'm happy to just having to win. I have a future on it, as I said, so I'm not playing it otherwise. I think the number's probably about right. Something tells me this game's a little bit closer, though. Um, this would be two great, you know, game preparers kind of going at it together, um, you know, and facing each other. I, it's a tough one. I, I, had, I had no interest. Just give me a win from Gonzaga. That's what I need. Go Zags. Get him to the finish line. Alex Dukas had 21 for St. Mary's in their win. Do they get their revenge? They were looking at a perfect season in the WCC at 15-0, and trying to be 16-0, and and Gonzaga beat them. So now you got a lot of motivation. Each direction. Fascinating. By the way, did you boys know, one more thing on the handicap, the last time that neither one of these two won the WCC tournament is 2008. Barack Obama had not yet been elected for his first of two terms. That's been a little bit. Uh, that was San Diego University winning the tournament, and San Diego University then upset UConn in the opening round in Tampa. I was there courtside in the NCAA tournament to watch that. 2008. As in 16 years ago, that's the last time somebody other than Gonzaga or St. Mary's has won the WCC tournament. They play again tonight. ESPN has got it from Las Vegas. 
Orleans Arena, 9 Eastern time, give or take, uh, there this evening. We look forward to seeing what happens. We gave you some good handicapping on that. One more. 